y'all, welcome to my shop. One viewer writes, I have a Jet 1642 lathe and I have no clue as to when I need to change the belt to the other wheel. When should you change the belt uh, p speed pulley on your lathe? I had that very same question 13 years ago when I first started wood turning with a Jet Mini lathe, the Jet 1014. There are a number of factors to consider and I want to uh, explore those with you and give you my advice toward the end of this uh, video, but first I want to uh, cover some basics. And I also want to give a shout out to Donald Fugit for, think, uh, for suggesting this video. Thank you, Donald. All too often, lathe manuals provide uh, scant information or, or guidance on speed. The one that came with my Jet 1014, for example, only says use the lowest speed when starting a new workpiece. Okay, well, that's not very helpful. Uh, many of us don't bother to read the manufacturer's instructions anyway, and if you're one of those and you've never bothered to read the manufacturer's instructions, you know, leave a comment below. Let me know how that's worked out for you. Lays need, lays need different speeds for different kind of projects. Obviously, a large uh, out-of-balance piece such as this one shown is going to need a slower speed than, than turning pen lays uh, like these kids at a, uh, at a wood show. Speed changes are generally changed three ways on, on a lathe. Either they're, it's a variable speed in which you turn a, a potentiometer or rheostat type of uh, speed because it's got some type of uh, electrical uh, conversion device. Or it's changed by pulleys such as many uh, non-manual speed uh, mini, mini lays such as my Jet 1014 that's got these five pulley changes on it. If, I'm, if I happen to mention a, a lathe uh, and it sounds like it's something I'm not uh, much in favor of or don't like, don't feel like I'm goring your ox. Nobody loves the ugly baby like it's, like it's mama and, and it's certainly not intentional. But like everybody else, I have my own personal opinions and sometimes they're just that, they're personal uh, parent, uh, opinions. So as I said, I started with this uh, Jet uh, 1014. I think I might have mentioned it had five pulley speed changes. It's actually got, got six. It's got a half a horsepower motor and you really need to change those pulleys to change the speed but it also uh, uh, changes the torque on, on the lower speeds. If I turn once a month or once a quarter like uh, uh, many hobbyists do, eh, chances are I'd have still been turning on that Jet 1014 instead of converting it into a dedicated buffer like a, as shown here. So why do we change speeds? Well, one of the reasons is project size, as I mentioned. Larger projects tend to require a lower speed uh, for two reasons. Number one, torque, but also for safety, because when you start turning real fast, uh, you've got uh, a much higher risk if something, if, uh, if that blank should, should uh, dislodge. Generally, you're gonna use slower speeds for larger pieces. It would be too dangerous to turn at high speeds. For example, except for very small bowls, you wouldn't normally turn a bowl much faster than 800 to 1,000 RPMs, and certainly slower when uh, starting to rough it out. So one aspect is, is safe turning. Let's look at the guidance uh, shown in my Powermatic uh, manual, as shown in this chart here. Many lathe manuals will give similar uh, safe turning speed. Notice that the recommended speeds slow down as the work gets larger. Although we think in terms of revolutions per minute, in reality we're concerned about the actual surface speed. The rim of a 9 inch bowl at 1000 RPM is generally going at about 27 miles per hour. This is about as fast as you want to turn with a blank that size. A 2 inch blank on the other hand would need to go uh, have a RPM of 4500 uh, to achieve that same surface speed. or. or Pen turners typically turn at very fast speeds, uh, sometimes uh, frequently in excess of, of 3,000. Now, roughing out a, an outer round piece or a very large spindle, we're going to start at, at slower speeds. A bit faster on general cutting, and then we generally turn the speed up when we're doing finish, uh, finished cuts, uh, when the blank is uh, running true. But then we're going to slow it down when we start sanding. So the fastest speeds are on finishing cuts. So here's a chart that shows some recommended lathe speeds for uh, the, the three different types of cuts. Roughing cuts, general cutting, finishing, which they generally mean the final cuts, and then we would slow it down very slow for sanding. You wouldn't sand it the, at the higher speeds. For a small lathe variable speed, most lathes such as the popular midi lathes 
that have a variable speed, they'll have typically uh, three belt changes. And the speeds are actually controlled by a uh, electronic variable speed dial and the position of the belt uh, on one of those three pulley sets. Here's an example on the uh, my club's record power Coronet Herald uh, that is uh, uh, electronically var variable speed, but it does have three different uh, pulley changes to affect those different speed ranges. It's also the same on my Laguna 1216. Uh, three belt changes even though it's an electronic variable speed. Let's look at some of the recommended speeds for a two to four inch uh, spindle based on this this chart. We'd probably set the speed on this on the third pulley and forget it for for most work. But for a uh, let's look at an eight to ten inch bowl. We're going to need to set the speed on the second pulley and because we often lose speed and torque when we're taking heavy cuts we might want to start roughing out at the first uh, first pulley setting. Let's take the example of an 8 to 10 inch bowl such as this one. Uh, if that's all we were going to be turning, we could probably set it at the middle pulley uh, on most of these lays, the midi lays that have three, three pulley changes for electronic variable speed and, and forget it. Uh, but we do get more torque uh, on the lower pulley settings. So sometimes uh, if you take heavy cuts, uh, you, you might be better off changing to, to the lower, lower pulley setting. If we're stalling the uh, lathe with heavy bowl cuts, we may need to slow the speed down. And this might call for dropping to a lower pulley setting. For small lathes with pulley speed changes only and not the electronic variable speed, such as the Jet Mini 1014 that I started with, you may have to go through a number of different pulley settings. You'd start with the, uh, the lowest one, and then as you moved up, you're going to go to uh, for general for roughing the lowest speed. Then you might move up to the next belt speed for uh, your general general cutting, and then you might speed it up one more time for uh, finishing cuts. The Harbor Freight 1018 uh, lathe has five speeds, as shown shown here. Uh, so you might only change the the lathe, the pulleys uh, twice: once to start out with, and then once to to do your general cutting and, and finishing. Let's look at larger lays now that uh, turn with the speed of a dial. Larger lays tend to have two belt pulley changes. Uh, generally speaking, you might consider that one for uh, cross grain turning and one for spindle turning, but you know that, that's kind of a, a broad description. On the 3520B, spindle speeds on the low setting is 50 to 1200. On the high speed setting, it's 125 to 3200. On the Jet 1642, which is uh, similar but smaller, less capacity, uh, that has generally the same size motor and the same type of variable speed, uh, the, the ranges are from 40 to 1200 on the low speed and 100 to 3200 on the large, large speed. So generally, we would, uh, we would set it and forget it on that bowl, bowl setting. Now, I was watching one, one uh, very skilled professional production turner uh, at a uh, symposium that apparently never turned on a uh, Pyromatic before, and he was turning spindles, and he had it on the low setting. Now, the one thing about that is you have a much larger, uh, much higher noise, and it was very difficult to hear what he was saying uh, when he had it revved up to the very fastest uh, speed that he could get on that low, low setting. So we got it between centers, going to turn the lay speed up at a high speed. Let me reset the belt because the last thing I turned was a, uh, was a bowl. So I need to change this to high speed, lower torque. Gonna get this round. And I read read one post uh, some time back on one of the uh, popular wood wood turning forums on on the internet about one individual that owned a Jet Jet sixteen forty two. He said he had it for two years before he even realized that you could change the the pulley speed. So another factor in the pulley uh, uh, setup is going to be the cutting factors. 
The speed of the cutting edge against the wood uh, does affect the quality of the cut and is affected by more than speed of the lathe. Other factors are the speed of the tool feed rate, just how fast are you moving the tool, the sharpness of the cutter, uh, the tool surface uh, area against the wood. If you're having a uh, larger, larger tool, sometimes that calls for a, a uh, slightly so slower speed because there's less friction on a smaller, smaller tool. And then the angle of the cutting edge is going to make a difference in that cut. Most modern lathes have what we call a poly V-belt that, that has a number of grooves that matches grooves in the uh, spindle pulleys. This is not a new concept. I saw this uh, steam engine used in the logging industry uh, more than 100 years ago in, in a museum that used ropes as pulleys and it reminded me of the poly V-belt uh, belts that we use on the lathe. After changing the, the belt, uh, it pays to turn the hand wheel to make sure that it's turning smoothly on the pulleys and that that poly V, those little grooves, match the ones on the, on the pulley. I've been in many a workshop where, uh, especially where there's no uh, electronic variable speed and you had, had five or six pulley changes, that uh, students that were not uh, familiar with a lathe and changing those speeds attempted to change them and in many instances they had the, the pulley uh, and belt out of alignment. Either they had it partially on, which tended, tends to destroy the belt after a period of time, or they had it mismatched where they uh, they had it at an at an angle crossing on the wrong wrong pulleys, which definitely will cause problems. Another consideration when changing the belts is normally uh, there's some type of mechanism for lifting the motor so you can easily move the belt. When you uh, finish that belt belt change uh, on these larger two horsepower motors, generally you don't have to press down on the lever or you'll tighten the belt too much. Generally the weight of the motor will handle it, just tighten it. The belt should generally reflect, uh, deflect no more than about three quarters of, of an inch. On the smaller lays, uh, when, you, when you lift and, and adjust the, the motor, generally you, you're going to have to press down just a little bit because the weight of the motor won't be sufficient, but again, uh, you can depress and make sure that it's not too too tight. Each lathe will obviously have its own way of, of accessing the, uh, the belts, uh, generally from two positions, one for the upper set of pulleys, and as is shown on this uh, Jet 10, uh, 1014, uh, the bottom pulley from the side. So here are some of my final recommendations. If you're buying a new or used lathe, I would avoid buying one with the lowest speed faster than 500. Otherwise, you may be frustrated when roughing out a bowl and the lathe vibrates wildly, walks across the room, or throws a bowl blank. A variable speed lathe where you can change the dial, uh, the speed with a, with a dial, is a lot more fun than changing a pulley multiple times as you go from roughing a blank to general general cutting to finish cutting to sanding, possibly with four different uh, belt changes, or changing before each project. If your belt, if your lathe is walking or vibrating violently, lower the speed. Uh, avoid Reeves drive uh, lathes. It, it's an older technology. Uh, typically they're, they're noisy, they're prone to maintenance, and they're awkward. Uh, there may be some exceptions if you've got a very old industrial lathe, uh, such as a, an older Powermatic. With variable speed lathes, set the pulley for the type of project that you have. Larger lathes with typically two belt changes, a general rule of thumb would be to use the low speed for bowls and other face grain work where uh, the grain is perpendicular to the lathe bed. Use the high speed setting for all other spindle type work where the grain is running parallel to the bed. If you have a variable speed mini lathe or mini lathe with three pulleys, typically set it on the middle pulley until you have a reason to change it. If you feel uncomfortable with the lathe speed, it's probably too fast. Slow it down. As always, I appreciate your comments. I've got a link to another video where we talk more specifically about uh, uh, safe lathe speeds. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.